Hey guys, uh, I got some progress. Um, the most obvious one being that there's now uh, blankets on the wall and uh, they're used to dampen the sound. This is a pretty small room. It's a, our office and it's like a one bedroom apartment with an office. So it's basically a second bedroom without a closet. Um, but the sound was bouncing off quite a bit uh, when the 3D printer was running. So it's kind of hard to watch TV or if you have to hear it all day long with the printer going, which is the plan with the robot arm. Um, this significantly dampened the sound. Uh, it goes up the whole wall and down the floor. Uh, so that's the first progress <laughs> towards this process. But uh, as far as the robot and the printer goes, um, there's been a complete, I don't want to say a design shift or idea shift. Uh, so originally, the idea was to have the robot take the build plate out and put it into a carriage, either pop off the material or the parts, and then put the build plate back in or do a hot swap and swap the build plates. Um, I posted the video, last video, onto the Bamboo Lab official Facebook group. And I gotta give a shout out thank you to uh, Joshua Folder. He said that I should just get a Wham Bam build plate, which I had to look up. I didn't, I heard of it. I didn't know much about it. Um, if you don't know about the Wham Bam build plate is after the print is done, the printer cools off naturally. Once it gets below 50 C, 50 degrees Celsius, um, the parts literally just pick off, like they come off so easily. So my plan then has shifted. So instead of taking the build plate out, um, I'm going to have the robot, I'm going to put a suction cup on the robot, and the robot will be, go, be able to go in there, suction the part, and pull out the part, and then drop the part off, and then close, open and close the door. Uh, so that seems like a much easier process, and then I can just set up my prints so they're at different points of the build plate, and then the plan was to make a raft under um, under each part. So I have nine parts that I print regularly, and I was gonna put a raft under the individual parts, and, and the reason for the raft is so I could have like a little coin. We'll say a little, I'm gonna make a, it's really thin, about a quarter inch round coin. It'll be like a part, um, and it, what that's doing is it's making a flat section for the suction cup to grip to and pull the part out. So that coin will be on the same spot on the build plate for all nine different parts. So every time the robot goes in there, no matter what the print was, it'll be able to suction to that coin and then pull the part out as one. Um, at the end of this video here, I'll jump on the computer and show you the actual um, coin, how I plan to lay that out with uh, one of my parts, which is the heaviest part, because the next process is I ordered a small 20, the robot is 24 volts. Um, you can see right here, there's a connector right here at the end of the arm. Um, so I had to order the little connector that goes into that. Um, I ordered a little 24, the smallest, 24 volt uh, air pump, and then a really, really tiny 24 volt uh, valve, because um, when the air pump turns on, it creates the suction to lift up the part. And when you turn the air valve off, it maintains that suction so it doesn't drop the part. So I had to get a little valve to release the suction so it actually drops the part. Um, so with that, um, I started looking into the kind of the process. The Wham Bam build plate has you change the G-code sequencing, I believe, at the beginning and end of, this, of the print. Um, I already have been looking into that. And for that, on the Facebook group, I got to thank uh, Edwin Russell. He's been a big help with kind of modifying the code. So right now, the modifications I have is the print bed. When it finish print, finishes printing, it goes all the way down to the bottom and stops. And what I think I'm going to do is put a, a little 24 volt switch in there. And when that switch is activated, it's going to trigger the inputs on the robot, and that's what's going to start the robot moving. Um, the, so that was the first modification. The second modification he helped me with was getting rid of all the extrude lines. So currently when you do the print, there's a front 
a clean line and then there's a back one that goes around the corner um, and then obviously the um, the calibration lines so the calibration I can auto turn off as you guys know when I send a print I could just opt not to do it uh, but now I can send a print and it only prints the part it doesn't do any of the other lines which is beneficial because if I take the finished print out of the printer and then hit print again there can't be extrude lines on there because uh, they'll just keep adding up or they'll hit each other so those two improvements are for the uh, the code side of it and then the last part of the code is when you when I uh, start the second print the build plate as soon as you send it and it's in the G code um, the build plate moves down I think like 12 millimeters um, and that's in case your build plates all the way up it knows to move down before it starts anything so I got rid of that every time my print finishes it automatically goes to the bottom so it's always going to be down there so I just got rid of those two lines. And the reason for that is if I put that switch at the bottom that's gonna trigger the robot, I can't have the next print start and wanna go down because it's gonna wanna go through that switch. Um, so let me show you the parts I got ordered here and then I could show you uh, what I plan to do for the actual print with the little coin and the raft um, and we'll go from there. Okay, here I have the little it's not little it's actually kind of big but it's a 24 volt um so there's a power and a negative and it's not that heavy i think it's 12 ounces um so i think the plan was is going to be to actually make it mounted to the end so it's all contained up here uh but i'm not too sure yet it might be mounted here and then just the hose runs i don't know what i'm going to do exactly yet um the other thing is this um plug this is what goes into here um and you can see it's got the same connector um so this is what will control the valve uh, which is here and the pump to do the vacuum and then here's the tiny little valve again it's uh 24 volts but it's got two ends here so it'll go in the middle of this hose and then when it deep when it goes to let go, it'll just exhaust out that extra hole, which will create, will release the vacuum that's trapped between the line and the pump when the pump, or the suction when something has on there. Um, all this being said, I had to move the 3D printer forward a little bit, so now that the arm can actually get in there to get to the part, um, that shouldn't be an issue. I'll have to change the G-code that opened the door. Um, obviously, I'm going to have a different uh, ender, end effector on it. So those are the changes for that. And then I'm either going to mount that to the end here. This robot is rated for a pound and a half of weight at the end. And with this, the 3D print, the plug, the little valve weighs nothing. Um, and then the part, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty close to a pound and a half. Maybe not. Uh, but that is my only concern about putting this on the arm. Uh, also, it's kind of heavy or kind of bulky so it'll have to be either up to the side of it or somewhere else so uh, I'm undecided on where that's going just yet but um, yeah those are the parts ordered and uh, let's jump on the computer here uh, so we're in here on my computer and obviously this is the bamboo labs uh, slicer so in case you guys don't know um, up here is where you can set your user presets and to make a custom one, so this is the one that came with the setting, but you just click on this uh, little edit note over here, and then in your machine G code, this is where you make all the edits to the start G code, the end G code. Um, I don't know any of the rest of this, but those are the two that I'm dealing with. So um, all the edits are done in here, and then when you hit save, it'll give you the option to, here, I'll just do it. Um, so you change the name, and then if you hit OK, I already have it saved, so I'm not going to hit OK. Um, but it just saves the new name in here. Um, and then you'll have other options in here. So this was, when I first tried it, I just wanted to get it to end an inch from the bottom. And now it's ending an inch from the bottom, and then there's no lines on the build plate. And then this one, so I'll probably delete this one, but this one also has um, the start G-code that doesn't move the build plate down. 
Um, so there's that, and then, like I said, here's my largest, in quotes, parts um, that I print out of my nine parts that are printed regularly. So they're not too bad uh, size-wise. And then this is that little coin. You can see, I think it's only 40 thou thick, and it's about, I think it's one inch, maybe an inch and a quarter, um, which the suction cup is only three quarters of an inch, which is plenty of error to miss it. But the plan is to, you can see right here, there's this dark line here. Um, let me go to prepare. If I put this on this corner for every print I have, so it's on these two lines, which is one, two, three, four, five, six or so from there, and five from here. And as long as I put this coin in every spot, the same spot for every single one, I can move the parts around so that I can still get to the coin. And then all I gotta do is make sure that when the robot comes in, it goes directly over, has room to go down, and the, uh, the coin will be in the same spot for no matter what is being printed over here. And then if I slice this, um, well now it's missing, so I would go back and I'd move this guy forward, slice again, and then you can see they're all together. It's all printing together with the raft. Um, so that would be the plan, is if I pick this up that it all stays connected. Um, and I could just pick it up from this one spot. Uh, hopefully, I don't think it, right now it looks kind of weak in here. I, I'll probably end up moving this over again, but hopefully that this doesn't just break off when I go to lift it up and I can actually get the parts out. Otherwise, I'll have to put this little coin somewhere in the middle and then have the robot is gonna have to have a long enough depth. This is probably two inches, maybe two and a half, but it'll have to have that much of a reach to come down pick up the whole thing from the center and then pull it out. All right, uh, sorry there's not much uh, physical movement and changes in that nature, but because the whole scope changed with not pulling the build plate out and putting a new one back in and using the vacuum pump, um, I had to order the new parts and it, they took, I'm planning to make a video every week, so with them uh, being shipped and all that, I haven't had a chance to make any forward progress on it, but I think the scope changing is pretty good forward progress. Uh, I'm excited to figure out the solution for mounting the air pump, whether it's on the end effector or on the table, and then um, trying to get the parts to print with that little, call it a lily pad or something, with that little pad uh, available so that the suction can come up, come to, to it and print it out. Um, I have the wham bam plate. I didn't, I didn't show it. Um, but I'm also try, excited to print with that and see how easily the parts come off. Uh, I've seen some YouTube videos of it and it, it looks pretty cool. So uh, uh, I did want to say if you have any questions or if you have any ideas, please put them in the comments of the video or if I post this to Facebook, please put them on there. Um, I'm definitely checking them because these two guys uh, kind of helped, I think, ease the process and make everything go, go a little smoother and quicker as far as the whole operation. So uh, if you have any suggestions or ideas, please do comment. Um, and then if you can subscribe, uh, it'll probably be another two or three videos. The next one for sure, I'm going to have more updates with the, the coins, the vacuum, and I'll have a solution for the end effector with the, the vacuum pump. And then there might be one or two more after that where I actually have this thing uh, working and fully automated doing prints uh, on its own. So uh, thanks. And like I said, please subscribe. Uh, give this video a thumbs up because it helps uh, get more people to see it so I can get more suggestions on what I'm doing wrong or how I could do it better. So uh, thanks for watching.